Hello and welcome to Catch More Media. In today's show, we bring you highlights from the Daiwa Pole Fishing Masters. Held at the prolific Tullabarn Farm Fishery near Warwick, the three-day event attracts the cream of UK match fishing, all battling it out for a prize fund of more than £20,000. Joining us for the third and final day of action was England ace and Daiwa-back star Will Raisin, who gave us his lowdown on who he thought the runners and riders were going to be. Well, here I am with Conor Barlow, who's currently leading the competition. Drawn peg 24 today on club. Not a favourable draw, but again, he's got a little bit of room and hopefully he's going to do all right. How's it gone so far for you, mate? Um, it's gone really well, well, to be honest. I've had two late wins, I've drawn two good pegs. And You've got to, though, in this, yeah. sort, of, in this sort of match and, and with the, the calibre of anglers that are here, you have to draw yeah, well, but you also can. you have to perform well. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have drawn good pegs and, and maybe not put in the performance yeah. that they could have done. So you have to draw well. So where yeah. did you draw the first day? What, what um, peg? I was on peg 15 on high. Right, yeah. Um, How did you catch that? I caught 40 fi 20 fish down the edge to start. I've gone shallow and had a brilliant run, caught 40 fish shallow. and then it On maggots or? No, casters. Casters, right. Yeah. And banded then, casters? Yeah, banded casters. Right, and then yeah. There's a lot of fish being caught this, this week yeah. on that, isn't there, yeah. But that, that initial run just died then, I've not caught anything, I've ended up like shipping across 15 metres on yeah, hard yeah. pellets and catching yeah. up and down. Yeah, I mean just talking to people this morning, it seems to be that, yeah okay you've got to be where there's a, a, a volume of fish, but you have to chase them around, you have to yeah. catch them there one minute, shallow and then across yeah. and chase them around and I think that's where Obviously, anglers like yourself have really scored this week. Yeah. What about the second day? Uh, yesterday, I drew peg five on the top pool in the bottom bowl, which is a fancy area. I drew there Sunday as well, the same peg. Luckily. Right, so good I'm bit like, of practice yeah, then. So, literally just the same, exact same spot where I caught Sunday. I caught yeah. again yesterday, near enough every fish down the edge to me right. Right. Just uh, on pellets. Pellets. Yeah, soft pellets. A little bit of ground bait or no, micros? Just, or? just micros. Micros, just right. Just soft four on the hook. Never mm -hmm. like emptied it but mm. just caught steady in mm. spells. Mm. See that kind of tactic just didn't work last year. No. It was all, you know, catching shallow or maggots and a little bit of ground bait, but pellets having spoke to people yeah. seems to have been a good bait. Well I fed a caster line as well yesterday mm. out my hand and caught like two fish on it. it yeah, just... yeah. And obviously the million dollar question is peg twenty four here today, how's this gonna how are you yeah. gonna look at tackling this? It's not one I would have chose to be honest no. because no. it's not been very good. But Jamie won the lake on one on the first day, so you never know. It's an M peg. Yeah, Cross yeah, that's it. To me, right. You're looking for what sort of weight do you think to, think to eight, win the lake? Eighty pounds. Yeah, there's some good it, fish in here, isn't there? Yeah. So, so you don't need loads of bites. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll do it, mate. Anyway, good luck. Cheers, well, here we are on peg four on house with Dead Ship, who's currently in joint fifth position, tenth on weight. He's drawn a good peg today, and I think he fancies it. He's got some good anglers in his section though, so he's going to have to catch a big weight. Talk us through from day one, Des. Uh, yeah, uh, day one I drew on 20s, Will, and I, I think I interviewed Tom, well, I interviewed Tom, interviewed me on Sunday, and he said, what do you reckon? I, it was windy. It was mm. windy Sunday, and it was windy Monday, and the wind was blowing down this end of the lakes. Yeah. And if you looked at the results on the practice day on Sunday, all the weights were sort of where the mm. wind was. Similar to last year, really. Yeah, and I drew 20 on Jennings, which is up this end, and... I think as well, you you know, from last year, you needed to be sort of 18, yeah, 17, yeah, yeah. 16, 15. And that was the case, really. But I've had to fish a different match. I couldn't catch shallow. And I've caught everything over on hard pellet. I've yeah. had some carp. I think, um, that's, I think that's a good thing, though, with the bigger sections. You can fish a bit more concert, like damage limitation. It is, really. That was, and you ended I, up with a brilliant yeah, result. Yeah, to be honest, a fourth, you know, fourth on that lake, fourth in my section, obviously, was, was a, I thought, to be honest, I was a bit gutted, really, because there was a £123, which was third. Mm. And I had 104, yeah. and I did lose a couple. You know, I did foul look mm. a few because I had to feed. It felt on the day I had to be quite aggressive with pellets. If right. I just cap potted in like 10, it wasn't no good. Yeah, I had to fill put the a pot volume in, and that was it. Was one of them days. So expanders on the hook, or no hard, pellet. hard it was, pellets. It was 15 meters wide, right. and to be honest, fishing expanders, it was it was this deep. Yeah, yeah. And as you know, these fish are a nightmare when mm. it's like four foot against a feature. Yeah, yeah. So I just yeah. fished hard pellet. But all in all, a good result from maybe not the best area. Yeah, really. I was quite happy with it, to be honest. Yeah. I didn't yeah. show it, but yeah. I was quite happy. Yeah, but I think with these bigger sections, that's you, you can fish a lot more, yeah. more tactically, yeah, can't you? Can, you? Because yeah. you don't necessarily have to win. 
you have to do yeah you just got to do well. as good as you can for what, mm. what what peg you've got yeah yeah so and the second day second day i drew 29 on um high pull which is the actual peg i drew last year yeah but it fished a lot better last year that lake that's that lake's fishing well but not mm. like it was last year i think the fish have got a bit bigger and a bit wider yeah, yeah, i've been fished for a bit um and basically i started it was 16 meters to the island which is a, a nightmare mm because it, it's obviously wide and you are trying to catch these but I had a good little run to be honest just fishing I fed micro I found about two and a half foot of water which was mm. the shallowest but it was snaggy yeah snagged up a lot against island yeah, and I yeah. did find yeah. out ideally would you like to got in a little bit shallower water I or? did but it felt like when you plumbed up it was like like rocks and shells yeah. and I just found a nice little flat area what I didn't realise was there's uh, they put some netting around that to stop the island from caving in and I think right. I was looking up on that mm. But anyway, I had a little run on that. I caught a few shallow. I fed um, a bit of slop with some worms and chasm, which is right, the same yeah, as what yeah. I've done last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. You made that work last year. Yeah. It? It were there many people doing that, or there was a couple, but they weren't. It didn't. It, yeah. it wasn't like it's not like last year. You remember last year we were feeding shallow, but you could catch yeah. on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Not this year. No. It's proper no. weird. Everything seems to be shallow in the edges or against the bank. Right. If you remember so that, shallow or in shallow water. If you remember last year, there was nothing mm. against the far bank, was there? Mm. This year, it's been different. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, been yeah. some fish caught against the islands. Yeah. Um, basically, I've caught, I, had a, I probably caught about 12 or 15 shallow, but they were a nightmare to catch. Mm. Re I'm chucking the slop in, and sometimes they're in it. Yeah, yeah. And you couldn't catch Too them. Too shallow. Too yeah. shallow, nightmare. Yeah. Um, and, and then what I, weight did you end up with? I then? ended up with 100, no, sorry, 88 pound. I'll be honest, I didn't think I caught that. Mm. And that was second in the section, so yeah, yeah. I was well happy with that, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I'll again, another good result. Is, yeah. You know, it, what I like about the format is with the bigger sections, I know I've mentioned it before, but there's a lot more tactical fishing. It's not yeah. like I have to win my section, no. because in the years gone by, if you don't win your section every day, you don't you, get you, in the no, top few. You're not, not going to get in the top five. So really it's good to see good sections. anglers fishing a bit more tactically to, yeah. to maybe come third or fourth yeah, like every, you did on the first It's the same day. today, really, Will. I mean, mm. I've got uh, Andy over there. Andy Powers is where the match was won yesterday. Uh, Paul mm. and up here. I mean, they, they come here all the time. And, yeah, yeah. You know, as well. We don't do... I mm. probably do a little bit more of this fishing yeah, yeah. than what you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're so switched on to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not just what they feed, but where to fish. Yeah, yeah. What depth yeah. to catch at. This is the thing, I mean, you know, as, as we know, it's about depth. And if your peg's not the right depth in the right place, it's very difficult, it's difficult. then. It is very you know? difficult. But obviously, I've drawn a good peg today. The guy mm. on here on um, Monday caught 150 pounds, literally, down the edge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I spoke to his mate this morning. Sorry, I spoke to the guy's mate who was on there yesterday, and he never, he never caught a fish down the edge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So you're like, yeah, yeah. but we, I mean, we just had a chat with Connor and speaking to him about his week. He's caught a few shallow, then yeah. a few in the edge, then a few more shallow, then across, and then back in the edge. Yeah. And it, it seems to be basically what you said how your matches have gone. You need to swap and change yeah, and just keep fish coming. It just depends on what baits. I mean, yesterday I made a massive mistake. I mean, at the end, I was feeding, I caught some fish on feeding micros and I'm going to expand on it, formal expand on the hook down the edge, and it's sort of like two and a half foot, mm. as shallow as I could find. Then I'll change the maggots at the end, so I'll turn the mic switch on. Mm. And you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't think that, mm. but that's what these places mm. are like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't I didn't do it early enough, I just thought if I put two maggots, yeah. I'm going to get bitted out. Yeah, yeah. There's no bits yeah. feeding. Yeah, that's it. Brilliant. So if, uh, one question I want to know is if you could build your own peg depth wise, in the edge or across, what would be the depth you would want it to be? I think you want sort of two to two and a half foot. Yeah. But I, I think what's really important is you've got that depth that far from the bank. Yeah, yeah. So the fish come, they, they can't come this they, way. They're, they they're, have they're to in come. that. They're in two foot, but there's no, there's no reason for them to go up the shelf. Yeah. But they don't want to come any shallower. So yeah, you've got yeah, that yeah. depth that yeah. far from the mud. Yeah. I think that's really important. When yeah, you get yeah. that stony shelf, yeah. it's a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's it. Two that's... foot is, you know, I've fished at, at Westwoods and, and here a bit, and two foot does yeah. seem to be. And you know, don't you? You plumb up and you think, Ooh, oh, hello. that is. That if they, is if they're in your peg, and I think with two foot as well, it's important because you can feed various baits. If you're not catching, you can put ground bait in. Mm -hmm. Where if you're fishing in three foot, you think if I put ground bait in, all they're going to do is yeah, come yeah. off the bottom. And, and has ground bait been good for you this week? I put ground. I, I messed up a little bit yesterday. I was a bit dubious about putting ground bait in, but I, yesterday it definitely got fish in me peg. Yeah. I had to leave it. I had to put like a pot full in. Like a bit of an impact. Yeah. Just leave it. Fifteen minutes. Go in there, and they're on yeah, it. Yeah. But if you yeah. if you sort of dribbled it in with a little pot, mm. they want the same. You had to put a volume no. in, 
get away from it, which is unusual for an F1, because you know it's normally little pots. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. yesterday it was like a volume of ground bait. Leave it for 10 15 minutes mm. and then go it in. It is unusual to, I know. to put the volume but of that, bait I in. I think that's because the fish aren't, there's not millions of fish in your pen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I honestly thought yesterday, because the wind, the, well, there was a little breeze going down my end, and I thought the edges were going to be solid. And yeah, I'd yeah. like literally want to chuck. It mm. didn't, it didn't, it went by that. So going on to today, what's the sort of um, attack for today? Well, or the, similar, like yeah, a, short, a, a, a few different methods yeah, and just shallow, shallow, short down the edge, really. Because yeah. I'm gonna after one, I've got to catch a big weight. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. I mean, I mean make no bones about it. You've got Andy Bennett in your section, Andy Powers, yeah. Paul Holland, and whoever you know, else they'll be worrying about you more than yeah. than, than you're worrying yeah. about them. But that is. A hell of a yeah. class lineup in, yeah, in, in one like, section. Oh, it's, it's mega, and you know, one I got to catch a big weight, mm. and this lake's been fishing its absolute head mm. off. I mean, mm. I think on Monday, I think it was only one or two people that didn't break a ton. Yeah, which is ridiculous yeah. for the size of this lake. In my opinion, and I, I said it to Tom off air, I think that to win this section, you're probably going to have to win the match. I would have thought so, unless it switches That's... off because it is—it's a different day today. Yeah, yeah. Bright, yeah. still. Mm. But going hot. on the last two days. With the quality of anglers that's on this lake, I think you're going to have yeah. to win the match. But you never know. No. You know what it's like. Yeah, oh yeah. Weather changes. And yeah, yeah. You might need 18. I mean, yesterday, I think third on this lake was 90 pounds. So it, right. there was two massive weights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But third or fourth. I think fourth, actually, was 90 pounds. Mm. So, but the plan mm. attack really is cast a shallow. Yeah, yeah. Turn that to maggots if I can't catch on casters. Start on pellets in the edge. If I don't catch on pellets, I'll put crown bait and maggots in. Mm. Maggot, I think maggots, even though it's you wouldn't think it, I think maggots are going to be really important to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the plan. Good, the good. Well, good luck, mate. Yeah, cheers, and mate. We'll, uh, we'll catch no up problem. with you during the day. No problem. See you later. I'm behind Connor, he's playing a fish now. He's had a little bit of a slow start, but the good news for Connor is he's in front obviously on points and the whole lake seems to be a little bit off. There's not a lot being caught, so he might not need to catch a massive weight to do well in the section. He's had a few decent fish, he's got another fish on now, fishing tight across on pellets. Like I say, just really being patient. Every lake seems to be a little bit different. You've just seen on Jenny's, it's catching bigger fish shallow but across. When we were with Des and Andy Bennett, they're catching a lot of fish close to them. This lake here on Club it definitely seems to be fishing across for an odd decent fish. Connor's doing it nice and tidy, but like I say, the best news for Connor at the moment is that the lake's definitely fishing quite hard. Well, here I am behind Steve Openshaw, peg five on Jenny's. He's catching really well across got a nice bed of rushes across, he's loose feeding casters, fishing a real nice tidy match, flipping his rig over all the time. And it's not until you start walking around these lakes you realise just how many people are actually in contention today. Connor Barlow, I've only seen him catch one fish, he's leading it at the moment, but he's in a peg that can produce late on. And there's people like Steve, like I say, that have drawn okay, doing a real tidy job. And he looks at the moment to be well on his way to a very, very good result. We've just come off the other lake, Des is catching very well, Paul Holland, there's a lot of people, Andy Bennett's starting to catch well. So it really is going to go down to the wire, and one thing is for sure, today you're going to have to catch a lot of fish to get good points. Well, as you can see, I'm sat here behind Andy Powers, who's really, really motoring at the moment. He's on peg 22 on house, fishing casters shallow, across against the bed of rushes. Peg did produce yesterday a good weight, and like I say, this section really is a who's who of angling. And they're all catching, so the weigh-in is going to be absolutely frightening. Catching shallow, like I say, got a real good rhythm. They definitely seem to be against the rushes. We just watched Steve Openshaw on Jenny's catching with casters across against the rushes. Maybe it's because there's not a lot of wind, very hot. The fish just seem to be drawn towards a bit of cover. People that are catching well have definitely got a bit of cover. Andy, like I say, is really motoring. He's caught three or four since we've been here. 
and a big weight's definitely on the card. Paul. You see Paul Holland in the background, again fishing nice and short, catching a lot of fish. We're well into the second half of the match now and what a lot of these anglers, especially the ones that have got off to a good start, will be thinking is just to keep fish going in the net. This is why you've seen them prime in different lines, loose feeding casters long, pellets short, maggots in the edge. Definitely a good, good tip to, to keep different areas of your swim primed. So if one goes dead, go on another and keep fish going in the net. There's one or two people struggling around the lake so the catch rate isn't quite as high so what you might find is them starting to use tactics like meat or even ground bait and maggots in the edge to try and catch some decent fish. It'll be really interesting to find out exactly how this lake pans out. I've been watching Andy Bennett from a distance for two or three times today and for some reason he just doesn't seem to be catching at the speed of say Dez and Andy Powers and maybe even Paul. So like I say, but Andy's one of those people that is quite deceiving in the fact that he doesn't necessarily look like he's catching a lot of fish, but always weighs a few fish in at the end and does really well. But at the moment, I think he's got his work cut out with Des and Andy Powers, especially in this section. But again, I definitely wouldn't bet against him. As we've been saying all match, it's very difficult to actually predict what's going to happen. There's a lot of good anglers on low points catching a lot of fish today. You see behind me in the pink, Ashley Prestige, peg 15, is catching a lot of fish shallow. He's on five points and he's going to be very, very dangerous. We've been around this lake two or three times. He's been putting fish in the net all the time. Looks like he's fishing shallow. We can't actually get near him because obviously we need to give a little bit of respect to the anglers and keep back. But like I say, he's doing a nice, nice job. We've been round, spoke to a few other people, and they've all said that he's been catching quite regular. So that's another one to watch out for. He's on five points at the moment. If he manages to get a win today, that'll put him on six. He's definitely going to frame with that. And you never, ever know, because the way the other lakes are panning out, we've got Connor, who's starting to struggle. He's got 21 fish. He's obviously on two points. Paul Holland, at the moment, looking like he could be third, maybe fourth. So it is still wide open. 
Problem is here at Tunnel Barn, there's so many fish everybody's catching. It's very hard to predict exactly what's going to happen. But like I say, Ashley's just one of many that are doing a fantastic job on a decent peg. As we've already discussed today, there's quite a lot of anglers on five, six, seven points. And one of those is Jamie Hughes opposite me on peg 27 on top pool. He's doing a real good job. He's catching a few fish, fishing long up the edge. And like I said earlier, it's important if your lake's fishing well to catch the fish close to you. On the other lakes, like this one where the, the fish are not responding that well, you've got to fish away from yourself and keep those fish going in the net. We've only been watching Jamie for literally a few minutes. He's had to, he's just hooked another decent fish. And he'll be thinking to himself, I'm on six points and if I can do a good job today, first or second, I'm looking at a top 10 finish. And when you haven't drawn particularly well, that's the kind of mindset you've got to have. Sometimes it's about fishing for a position, a place in the top 10, and just conceding the fact that you can't actually win. But he's doing a real nice job, and hopefully for him, he's going to win the section, or like I say, be right up there. Finally, on to today's results. Fifth place, we're going to 152 pounds, six ounce, Matt Bingham. Fourth place, we're 167 pounds, 10 ounce, Andy Bennett. Third place, we're going to £177, 13 ounce, Kerry Kirkwood. Second place, we're going to £187, 12, Des Ship. And a big round of applause again, please, this is the day three winner of Colossal Weight, £222, three ounce, Andy Power. Well done, Andy. Right, before I move on to the main list, I just want to say a big word of thanks, first of all, to Tunnel Barn Farm. Literally, as I said at the opening, I couldn't have done it without them this year. The support they've given me has been fantastic, um, and quite literally, I couldn't have done without them. So a massive round of applause for them. Also, this event wouldn't be what it is without its sponsor. I said this morning that they've kindly agreed to extend the sponsorship for another year. Um, so, you know, what I was going to say is somebody's going to walk away with a pole worth four, four and a half grand. So, you know, you couldn't get much better than that. Big round of applause, please, for Stephen and Will and Dan. Okay, we'll move on to the top 15 in a second, but first we have a cheeky little £10 super pool. And all them £10 added up, so the biggest overall weight this week picking up £1,000 for the weight of £222, 3 ounce, Andy Power. Third place, seven points, one section win away to £453, Paul Holland. And your runner up is at seven points, two section wins. Steve Openshaw. Thank you. Which leaves you with this year's champion. He's had five points, so I won it quite comfortably. Have a massive round of applause, please, for the new Daiwa Pole Fishing Masters champion, Connor Barlow. And the pole. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am with the 2017 Darwin Masters champion, Connor Barlow. 
Fantastic display of fishing today, mate, and all three days. How does it feel? Buzzing, Will. Absolutely yeah? over the moon, mate, yeah. Good. Best result ever had. So yeah, it's yeah. What a brilliant competition to win, huh? Yeah, the standard when, of angler is ridiculous. This so. is it. This is what's opened my eyes today. I mean, normally I'm fishing, but when you look around the standard of anglers, not just the household names that are fishing, but every angler fishing, even if they're not yeah. so much of a well-known name, they're fantastic yeah. at this style of fishing. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's so hard to win. Yeah, yeah. You just got to make the most of it when you do Taken get a over chance. from uh, Andy Bennett, huh? Yeah, yeah. A bit of luck. How much did you win in total, mate? Uh, just short of four grand, I think. Brilliant. Any plans for the money? Uh, well, I'm moving in my house at the end of the month, so. Brilliant. I'm guessing a lot of it will be going that. And good the pole? Timing. Nice um, new bit of kit? Yeah, buzzing with it, mate. Yeah, yeah, good. You'll take even more stuff in next year with that. <laughs> Don't know about that. But good. Well done, mate. Yeah, Congratulations. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Fantastic. Mate.